Chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. McClintock, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, amidst the international humiliation and farce that we've suffered with our abortive war on Syria, there are two good things the President has done, and they need to be noted. Last night, he stepped back from an international crisis that could have had catastrophic consequences by deferring to the Russian diplomatic initiative, thank God. And last week, he stepped back from a constitutional crisis by deferring to Congress the decision over whether to go to war as the Constitution requires. I've been deeply troubled by suggestions from many otherwise responsible officials and commentators from both parties that the President has independent authority as Commander-in-Chief to order an attack on other countries when he deems it necessary. This cuts right to the core of our Constitution's design and it evinces an alarming deterioration of the popular understanding of the separation of powers that keeps us free. There is nothing more clear in the American Constitution than that Congress has the sole authority to decide the question of war or peace. Only after Congress has made that decision does the President as Commander-in-Chief have the authority to execute that decision. For centuries, European monarchs had plunged their nations into bloody and debilitating wars on whim, and the Constitution's framers wanted to protect the American Republic from that fate. They understood that a president, for example, might someday paint himself into a rhetorical corner and feel compelled to save face by exercising force. That is precisely why they entrusted that fateful decision to the Congress. James Madison, the father of the American Constitution, said that its single most important feature was the provision that gave the Congress and not the President the authority to go to war. Here's what he wrote in 1793, quote, In no part of the Constitution is more wisdom to be found than in the clause which confides the question of war or peace to the legislature and not to the executive department. The trust and the temptation would be too great for any one man. War is, in fact, the true nurse of executive aggrandizement. In war, a physical force is to be created, and it is the executive will which is to direct it. In war, the public treasures are to be unlocked, and it's the executive hand which is to disperse them. Those who are to conduct a war cannot, in the nature of things, be proper or safe judges of whether a war ought to be commenced, continued, or concluded End quote. In Federalist 69, Alexander Hamilton wrote that one of the most important differences between the British king and the American president is that the, that the king can plunge his nation into war on his command, but that the American president has no such authority. The Constitutional Convention gave careful consideration to the clause that provides that Congress shall declare war. They chose that word carefully to make clear that the only independent war-making power of the President is to repel an attack. The War Powers Act makes this explicit, that absent congressional authority, the President can only order our armed forces into hostility in response to, quote, a national emergency created by an attack upon the United States, its armed forces, or its territories or possessions, unquote. Anything else requires prior congressional action. The United Nations Participation Act, by which we entered the UN, requires Congress to act before American forces are ordered into hostilities in UN actions. The War Powers Act specifically forbids inferring from any treaty the power to order American forces into hostilities without specific congressional authorization. Now, some have used the past violation of this constitutional stricture, for example, in Kosovo, or most recently in Libya, as justifying it to, 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 uh, to violate it now. That is precisely the point. If any violation of this fundamental constitutional provision can be used as justification for its outright nullification, well then any such violation must be vigorously resisted, lest we lose for all time the most important check on the most momentous decision that a government can make, to go to war. 
War is destruction on a massive scale. To unlawfully initiate such a thing is the highest crime that a public official could possibly commit. Indeed, if the power of impeachment were not intended for such an act as that, I cannot imagine what it would be for. The President was absolutely right not to cross that line. I yield back.